Welcome back to Smart Home Charge. In this episode, we are looking at whether you should choose a tethered or an untethered charger. Now, if you haven't seen any of the other episodes in this series, then click in this banner up here. That will take you to our previous episode on price or in the link in the description below. Now, as I said, in an earlier episode, we looked at price, but this is obviously quite an objective consideration. You either have the budget to afford a particular charger or you don't, or perhaps you don't want to spend too much. And that's perfectly understandable. And we've got a range of charges to suit your budget. But there are other more subjective factors to consider. And these are no less important as they relate more to how you will use the charger at home. So what exactly is the difference between a tethered and an untethered charger? Simply put, a tethered charger means that it comes with the charging cable attached to the device itself. So obviously it won't look so unwieldy because it will be attached to your wall, but just for demonstration purposes, you can see that the charging cable is built into the unit itself. In this way, it's more similar to using a petrol pump and many people prefer the design. There are a few advantages as well to choosing a tethered charger. The primary one being that it's more convenient as the cable is already accessible on your wall. It's also more secure. The cable is directly embedded into the unit itself, so it's not very easy at all to just pull it out. In fact, quite a lot of work would need to go into it to take the cable away. Obviously, it comes with a cable. Now, this is a slightly tenuous advantage because you can't use that cable anywhere else other than at your home, it's attached to the device. But you could look at it that you're getting a free charging cable. We recommend purchasing your own charging cable anyway, because for using public chargers, you will need your own charging cable, as not all public chargers have the cable attached. Some of them are just a socket only. Some of the disadvantages, well, the unit is obviously tethered, so you can't make use of it outside of your home in terms of the charging cable. You also need to find somewhere to store the cables. Now, some of the charging units will come with some form of dock or area to store the cable itself, but not all of them do. So keep that in mind. If it doesn't come with a charging dock, then just think about where you're actually going to put those cables. As I said, some chargers that we sell and install do have a storage area built into the design, such as the Anderson A2 or the Zappi. One of the other disadvantages with a tethered charger is that you will need to choose which type charger you will need. So for example, if your vehicle is type one, then you will need a type one charger. If your vehicle is type two, then you'll need a type two charger. Now, most new electric cars are type two anyway, and we don't see this changing anytime soon. So it's unlikely that you need to worry about this if you're buying a type two charger for your type two car. But it does mean that you're locked in to a certain extent. It's not so easy to change the cable over. If this is still a little confusing, then imagine installing a petrol pump at your home for your petrol car. Now, that's not a problem if you're not thinking about changing from petrol to diesel. But the minute you do, then obviously your petrol pump isn't going to work for your diesel car. Likewise, if you have friends or family that want to come over and use your petrol pump, but they have diesel cars, then obviously it's not going to work. The same scenario applies to type one and type two cars and the corresponding charger. They need to match. Tethered chargers also have a fixed cable length. This means you are effectively stuck with the cable length you choose at purchase. So think carefully about where you're going to park, how long the lead will need to be to reach your car. Obviously, just think about the positioning of do you drive forwards onto the driveway? Do you reverse up? As long as you plan it, this shouldn't be a problem and many of the manufacturers do offer upgrades so you can get a charger with a longer cable. So with all those advantages and only some slight downsides, why on earth would anyone in their right mind choose an untethered charger? Well, I can answer that because I'm one of those weirdos who did choose an untethered charger, and I'll explain why. 
Now, untethered, or sometimes called socket only, is a charger without a cable attached, and nor does it come with a charging cable. That means you'll need to buy your own charging cable separately, and these usually cost around £150. Most new electric vehicles do come with the appropriate charging cables, but please check with the manufacturer or dealer first. You don't want your car to arrive and your charger to be installed, and then you don't have a cable to use it. Luckily, my car did come with the Type 2 charging cable, so I didn't need to worry about it. So what are the advantages of an untethered unit? Well, this is quite subjective, but some people think it looks neater purely because there are no cables on a show. There aren't any cables that you have to store or find a way of making it look tidy. And as our charger was on the front of our house, we wanted something really neat and discreet. You can watch a video about my charger install by clicking on the banner in the top corner right now. The other big positive for untethered chargers is really to do with their flexibility. Because it's just a socket, all you really need is the correct charging cable. The socket will work with a Type 1 charging cable and therefore a Type 1 vehicle and the same with Type 2. So this is really handy if you've got friends and family who visit and they might have a different type vehicle they can still use your charger. In addition, if the technology were to change in future, and we don't think it will, but if it did, then your charger in theory should still work because it's just a socket and it's very likely that the charging cable will be the only thing that needs to change, although we obviously can't guarantee it. The other benefit to getting an untethered charger is you can choose how long of a charging cable you need. Obviously, you still need to purchase this separately, but obviously you have a bit more flexibility up front because you can get the exact length of charging cable you need. There are some disadvantages to untethered chargers and security is probably the biggest concern some people have about them. This is basically because the cable is more accessible than with a tethered unit. Now, some people find that more of a hassle because it means they have to open their boot get the charging cable out, plug it into the charger itself and then into the car. If that's you, then you're probably going to be better off with a tethered charger because that's more convenient. I hope this video has helped explain the difference between tethered and untethered chargers and why you might choose one or the other. Let me know in the comments below which one you've chosen. If you've already had a charger installed, I'd love to know. And I'd love to know if there are any other reasons for choosing one or the other. I have my own, but I'd love to hear yours. So leave me a comment down below. Make sure you give us a thumbs up. That always helps us out. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content. See you next time.